Hello everybody. Tonight I'm going to try something different. An unstructured rant inspired my, by my virtual YouTube friend David Shapiro who is an amazing AI futurist. If you haven't been following him already, I highly recommend that you check him out. He is well known for his work on post-labor economics. This is the theory of economics that occurs after the technical singularity. Well, I guess it's after the point where we all lose our jobs and we give up and and pass our work to to robots and things take over and he talks about the, the meaning economy one of the things I like about David is uh, beyond him being uh, almost bald beautiful and sexy like myself is um, and on the spectrum he is he's brilliant and he just kind of goes off and rants on things so I'm gonna try that tonight and please let me know in the comments if you guys like this format no script no rehearsal just letter rip no slides no edits so what I want to talk about tonight is there's a massive, massive business opportunity right now that I see in software development. So we're seeing a huge discrepancy between the efficiency of some developers. We see some developers that are seeing 20, 30, 40% improvement from AI, and we're seeing others that have literally 10, 20 X their productivity from a year and a half ago. And it doesn't, at first it didn't make a lot of sense to me because we're like, <laughs> you think software developers, they're so, technical, these are people that would be adopting technology first, right? Wrong. And I think I know why. This is a theory. If you look at the way software development typically works within a bigger company is you'll have like the entrepreneur, the visionary, you might have a product lead, you'll have a technical project manager, a development lead, and then a whole bunch of developers siloed off. And most of the time, by the time it gets down to the core developers, they're told very much what to do, i.e. they have very little creative freedom. They, they're great at math, they're great at the, the technology itself, but they're not entrepreneurial or creative or flexible with their thinking. They're told what to do, what language they have to program in, the specific requirements they have to meet. There's very, very strict quality assurance. They've got, like if they make one little mistake or they go off the plan, like everything has to be approved. It's not a creative process. And whereas I look at my uh, business partner, Andre, he's been an entrepreneur his whole life. He's super creative. And he is thinking as an entrepreneur, he's investing in software, he's investing in tools and training, and he's experimenting, and he is just growing in leaps and bounds. I've seen his productivity go up. We estimated over the last two years around 13x improvement, and he thinks he's going to double his productivity in less than 60 days. So bringing him up to 25x faster than this sort of GPT-4 moment. And he was already a 10x developer, so now he's running like 200 times faster than some of those sort of normal developers. And I think this is an incredible, incredible opportunity because if you can find those AI-first agentic developers that truly get it and can code 10, 20, 30 times faster than others, it's like hiring one person and getting uh, 20. And a lot of the excuses that I'm hearing from developers, I, I don't want to... Harp, I hope the developers that, that are only getting those 20 to 30% uh, gains are going to uh, tear me up in the comments. Uh, sorry, I, I love you guys. And I hope this inspires you to see those gains and, and maybe help educate me on why we're not, <laughs> what I'm missing here. But I think, I think I lost my, my, my train of thought. All right, that's the problem with unstructured rants. I'm not sure how David does it. He must have some notes there. But I think this is a massive opportunity for entrepreneurs in general because uh, one thing that Andre is working on, he's building an, an AI readiness assessment specifically for software developers so we can screen them and find the ones that have really found those outsized gains. Oh, yeah, I remember what I was talking about now. Like some of the excuses we hear, it's like, well, my code is too complex. I have millions of lines of code and it's legacy and there's no way I can do that. And we developers that are cutting edge, they're literally trans, there's tools to translate legacy code into smaller modular API first frameworks that work, uh, you know, technical things aside, that's not, it shouldn't be a problem. People are solving it. Like people like Andre are literally walking around the park, talking to his agents and having six different projects on the go, checking in millions of lines of code and it's all enterprise class, uh, totally secure software. So for me, this is another reason why I don't think the AI bubble is about to burst. I mean, it might deflate in the stock market. There's a lot of irrational exuberance in there, but if there's any pullback, like 
go in hard because this is <laughs> this is going nowhere but up in the long term. This is not going to be like the dot com collapse of 2000 where it took I think like 10 years for the Nasdaq to return to a previous high or something like that. This is not like the retail to e-commerce transition that took 20 years to materialize. This is going to happen very, very fast. And it's not going to take more than one or two years until the mainstream developers figure out like, oh shit, I can 10x myself. And by then, people like Andre will have 100x themselves. So it's getting easier. It's getting better. And I'm just shocked at how limited the adoption is. When you look at some of the stats about AI adoption, we think it's moving fast, but the adoption is really like, oh, are you using ChatGPT? <laughs> like, but there's so much more. Just using tools like Gemini and ChatGPT is only like one, two percent of the potential of AI. And the potential of AI is growing exponentially. And so just looking at that little bit within uh, the software development community itself, it's like, Ooh, like the canary in the coal mine about what's coming next. Can you imagine when the world's entire group of developers can 10x themselves within the next year, year and a half? What does that do? What does that do for software development prices? What does that do for the world? I mean, the whole world is based on software and technology. And yeah, so that's my little rant. Huge opportunity. If you can find these unicorns, if you can train them, if you can find ways to inspire and convert your team, I think probably the most important thing is to have a real sit down with your de development team and give them the creative flexibility and the time and the space to learn and test and try and have them connecting with the entrepreneurs. Like you need to inspire entrepreneurship. Now, I don't know for sure if this is something that you can train for. Um, it might be something that's sort of like an innate skill. Like for example, if you have I don't know, somebody who sucks at sales and doesn't like sales, can you turn them into an awesome, vibrant sales rep? I don't know, like just taking an introverted child and making them extroverted, is it possible? Maybe. It might also be that we need to start looking for experts that have maybe more entrepreneurial and technical business skills and then teaching them how to become agentic developers. Maybe it has to head in the opposite direction or pairing people up, you know, business and tech working together in, in tag team or something like that. But this is a huge opportunity. Whoever can solve this, uh, it's going to be a, a huge, huge win for them. I know Andre's path, he wants to build software, screen thousands of people, and then find those unicorns and work with them. But I think, I'd like to think that the masses of developers, there could be some sort of training program. We're going to have to sort of completely rethink the culture and the values and the freedoms and the creativity that we we structure within the, the development team. So anyways, that's the end of my first rant. Hope you like it. Leave some comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate you all. Have a great night and have fun playing with AI.